Please be seated. Methodist Church. Um, my name is Laura Forster. I am your worship leader, and we have Dave Garonsky in the choir and Pastor Kate Nickel. Um, it's Easter. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs> um, I want to point out the lovely flowers we have here. They were all given in memory or in honor of uh, different people that we love. And um, I would ask that after church, uh, if you um, purchase one of these, to go ahead and take it home and enjoy it and remember your loved one. Um, there are no announcements in the bulletin, but I will, uh, I have just a few. Um, small group with Lucinda is starting next Sunday at 6 p.m. and that's gonna be a hybrid, either in person or by Zoom. Um, we have a couple other small group options, Wednesdays at 6.30 with Carol, and Thursday at 2 p.m. with Beth by Zoom. Um, and just a few other things that are going on this week. There's Bible study on Monday mornings at 9.30. Um, prayer meeting at noon uh, on Wednesday here in person and by Zoom. Um, Thursday, there is a small group at 6.30 p.m., um, 7 a.m. on, mm, 7.30 a.m. on Thursday. I was wrong. Small group is Wednesday. Um, small group, there's a Bible study 7 a.m. on Thursday mornings, 7 a.m. over at the Four Corners with Pastor Kate and Pastor Tom Lux. Um, those are all the announcements I have. Pastor Kate, any? No. Okay, then with that, the opening hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 302. Please stand if able and join us.
bulletin and on the wall, please join me. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. That we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Will the children please come forward? I was going to say, don't touch that, Jack. Was it hot? Now you can tell everybody else it's hot. Don't touch it. Uh-oh, we're going to run out of room today. All right. What are we celebrating today? Anybody? Easter. Easter. Oh, my goodness. I think we can find you one. How about right here in front of Garrett? Can you go right there? So what are we celebrating again? Easter. We're celebrating Easter. So what's the best way to do an Easter greeting? Does anybody remember what I said when we were in the Sunday school room? Opal. Yes. And then on Easter, actually, what do we celebrate? She, uh, Madeline said Jesus dies on the cross. We, we, we remember Madeline dying on the... Uh, Madeline, not Madeline. Jesus dying on the cross on Friday. And then today, what do we celebrate? He rose. That's right. He rose from the dead. Now, I was trying to teach you guys uh, the Easter greeting, and clearly, even though this is my this is my fifth Easter here, I'm pretty sure that they have the adults in the church have not learned this yet. So, do you remember what the official Easter greeting was? I'll turn my microphone off so that they can't hear. What? Hi. That's the official Easter greeting. Okay. You're still in elementary school. (laughs) Yes. It's that's the end of it. What goes before it? Do you remember? Remember? Okay. All right. Tell them. (laughs) He's not going to know. Did you understand what I said? You got it? All right. Now, we'll see if they know the response because we're going to lead it and we're going to find out if they have any idea what the response is. Now, you, you can see, see, this is, this is something you get to learn. When you're, when you're here, you can see their faces so you know how many of them are going, I have no idea right now. You ready? You going to do it with me? Okay. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hey, they surprised me. You think we could do it again? You guys do the first part, and then they respond. Does everybody know what you're supposed to say up here? Yeah, and then we all say hallelujah. Can we do that together? Okay. Ready? Christ is... Okay. One, two, three. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. That's why we're here. We're here because Jesus doesn't stay dead on the cross. That's all right. We'll, we'll learn it. She was saying she was having trouble with the words. That's okay. You know why? Because those are some big words. And I could teach it to you in a couple different languages, but I don't think I'm going to do that this morning. I think instead, what I want you to remember, now this is, this is the other thing to remember, how long is Easter? Spencer, it's 50 days. Did you know that? Easter, the Easter season is 50 whole days long. Yes, the pastor's son in the back. The, <laughs> the Easter season is 50 days long, and we end it with the celebration of the birthday of the church. Yeah, that's right. So you're supposed to go throughout the next 50 days. Okay, Madeline, we're going to work on it. The next 50 days, you're supposed to greet everybody saying, Christ is risen, and then they'll look at you and go, is that about the face? This was the face I gave them. Because nobody knows what the response is, right? But we say that because it's to remember that Jesus isn't in the grave. He has risen. He is alive, and he invites us into new life in him. So we're going to end with Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And then we're going to go straight to the song, okay? So do you think you can help me lead them? I'll give... That's where the altar railing goes. You have lots of questions. Oh, Okay. No, you don't get 50 Easter baskets because what's the purpose of Easter? Is the purpose of Easter, is the purpose of Easter chocolate? Yeah. <sighs> Just give me all your Reese's. No, and Grace, you just give me a bunny one at was Easter and I found it in Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to do the, you want to help out, Levi? We're going to do the greeting one more time. Ready? You guys lead it. I'll count us down because clearly we need that. Ready? One, two, three. 
Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Okay, so after church, I just want to hear a lot of Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujahs. Got it? The whole time after church, as you're leaving, you're just, everybody's just going to say, Christ is risen. Should we practice it one more time? Should we practice it one more time? I think so too. Now, don't blow my eardrums, but be as loud as you want. Okay, Levi, cover your ears. Ready? Three, two, one. Christ is risen. You guys were louder. All right. So that's what you're going to remember over the next 50 days. And Mr. Dave is going to play our song. That's how we're going to end today. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning. Our first reading this Easter morning is from Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Happy Easter. What a beautiful morning. My name is Paula Kramer, and I'll be doing the second reading from Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Living as those made alive in Christ. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, verses 28 chapter 28 verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. 
for I know that you are looking for Jesus who's crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So, the women hurried away from the tomb afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met him. Greetings, he said. They came. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, may our hearts and minds be open to what you would have us learn this day, that we would grow in your grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, I love the sound of babies. I do. And I said to one of the moms, I bet there's going to be a point in this service where they're all going to chime in together. And when that occurs, we are all going to laugh and listen to the joy that children bring. (laughs) So I have a question for all of you. Who remembers that earthquake that happened? Like, was it a month ago? I... I could not believe that it was really only like a handful of you felt that earthquake here in Buffalo. It was the weirdest thing in the world. Now, I know that those of you further south didn't feel it, but if you lived in the Buffalo area, this is what I remember of it. I was, I was in, I was asleep. I was sound asleep. And then suddenly I was in midair because it shook the house that much that I, that I bounced up off the bed. And I said to myself, what is that? I thought, for sure, someone had driven right through my house. I mean, do we get earthquakes here? I didn't know. This is only my fifth year here, but last I checked, this is not a seismic activity kind of place. I didn't move from Maine to California. I moved to Western New York. And so I thought somebody, something must have happened, and so I went to check it out. But you see, I clearly wasn't that serious because I have contacts in right now, but I didn't put my glasses on. And it's pointless for me to go try and look out the window to see what's going on if I don't have my glasses on. But I did, and I checked, and I said, well, I guess I'm going back to sleep because there's nothing here. And so, like most people who are a little bit younger, um, I didn't find out by the morning news, though I'm sure many of you did, because I don't watch it. I was on Twitter, and it was trending in my feed, Buffalo Earthquake, and I said, what? Okay, this is just weird, Lord. I didn't, this, that's not what's supposed to happen when you, snow, that's what's supposed to happen. Nothing? Because seriously, I had never lived through like a five, six foot snowstorm before I came here. And I've lived through lots of snow. <laughs> but an earthquake made no sense. And I had, I just could not believe that this was what was taking place. Now, Matthew uses this concept, this idea of an earthquake in two places in his story about the resurrection. He talks about, an earthquake occurring as as Jesus dies on the cross, and then he refers here to an earthquake again as the women are approaching the tomb. Now, I do want to point out that it was the women because the men had run off and hid. They were afraid they were going to be persecuted for being present with Jesus. But as the women are approaching the tomb so that they can wrap Jesus' body and do the burial process with him, there's an earthquake. I don't think they really happen in Israel either, by the way. I mean, I don't see announcements about earthquakes in Israel or Jordan or places like that. Turkey, but that's that's a little bit further away, and so the earth shook again. And when the women looked up, there was an angel sitting on the stone. Now, if you read the other gospel accounts, this does not happen in the other gospel accounts because each one of these men has a different vision or memory of how this, how the resurrection took place. But there's an angel sitting on a tomb after this major earthquake, and for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to indicate that the women were all that surprised. 
Because see, that word fear isn't, or afraid isn't the same as we think afraid. We think afraid and we're like, oh my goodness, my heart's pounding and I don't know what's going to come next. I am scared. But fear is a form of reverence for God in this context. And so they weren't afraid like you or I would have been afraid to see an angel. How many of you would have been afraid if you saw an, a like, celestial being that didn't fit into any concept of anything you'd ever seen? You'd, would you be like, hey, that's awesome. Can I get your number? Can we text or something? No, I don't think we would do that, would we? <laughs> we would see this thing that was completely and utterly out of context, something that just doesn't fit with our understanding of reality. But on top of this angel sitting on the tomb, the angel talks to them and says, this guy that you've come to see that was buried, and yes, you know he was buried, his dead body was placed in this tomb, is not here. Well, what does that mean? If his body's not there, what does it mean? And the angel says, he's not here, he's risen. Now that just makes total sense, right? I go to a grave, I'm going to prepare a body, I expect to find a body. But there wasn't one there. Now, Pilate, listening to those who wanted Jesus crucified, stationed guards outside this tomb. So it wasn't just the women who came to, fin to finish the burial practices with Jesus. It, it was these guards, too, that were present when the earth shook and the angel appeared. Now, they have no context for what's going on. At least these women had walked with Jesus, followed him, and they'd seen him do miracle after miracle, bring sight to the blind, take a few loaves of bread and fish and make them feed thousands of people, giving the ability to someone to walk again who could not. I mean, in the penultimate to the resurrection was that he, ro he, he literally rose, he rose Lazarus from the, he told Lazarus, get up and come out of the grave. He rose Lazarus from the dead. These are all things that these women had seen as they followed Jesus around. And he had given them clue after clue after clue, all of the disciples, clue after clue after clue, that something else was coming. Even the Sanhedrin, that, that was the body that Jesus went before to be judged, understood that there was something that was going to occur that was different than normal, but they just figured people would come and steal the body because they heard when Jesus said, in three days' time, something's going to happen. And so they go, they send those guards to make sure that nothing happens but something still happened. When the women peer in the tomb as the angel encourages them to, he's not there. They get up and they, and they walk along the way. And Jesus just appears. I always wonder how this must look. Because on some level it is sort of Jesus just appears and he's like, hey! In the Gospel of John, he says Mary and she recognizes him. But in this particular Gospel, it's, hi ladies! Now I'm just curious if a person you know died and you were standing there as they breathed their last breath and you've come to prep their body for, for the burial process, suddenly appears before you in the cemetery, what would you say? Zombie apocalypse? Seriously. A vampire? Anything, right? This doesn't fit what we usually see in the world around us. It's not something that makes sense. It's out of the ordinary. It's this extraordinary event. And not only do they see him, he's not, he's not zombied, right? He has his whole entire brain, so he is talking to them. And he says to them, go tell all of those guys that ran off and hid, go tell them that I'm risen. Now, we read this story every single Easter. But my question for you is, has it really sunk in what it means for Jesus to not be in the tomb, but for Jesus to be resurrected? That, that's the real question when it comes to this message, because it is the center of the Christian faith. And, I, and I've heard many people in my lifetime and in my ministry proclaim that they believe in Jesus, but then when you start talking about what that means, that he's both human and divine, that he died on the cross, that he rose from the dead, these become things that people question and say, well, I don't know about that, and I don't know about that, and I don't know about that. But those women, when they went to the tomb, expected, they expected something. They expected to find his body, and it wasn't there. Because God was doing something different this time. God had set up a covenant with his people before, and that covenant was 
come and pray, make a sacrifice at the altar when you have sinned, and repent. Now, if you've been in church over the last couple of months, you know how this story goes. They start by saying, yes, Lord, we repent. We know we've done wrong in the world, and we're going to follow you to the end of time. And then life happens, and they turn away. And they stop coming to church, well, synagogue. They stop reading scripture. They stop praying. They stop observing the holy days. They stop all of the practices of the faith. And as they do that, bad things start to happen all around them. And they they, they wonder again what's going on. And they cry out to God and they say, come on, God, do something. Fix this situation, usually the situation that they've created. Now think about your own context. How often do you pray? How often do you read your scripture? How often do you come to church? How often do you participate in those things that help you understand what all of this faith stuff is about? Okay, so I was asking. Only the baby said an answer. That's okay, you don't have to tell me. Because I know that the answer goes something like this. Life happens, and we get distracted, and we do what we want, and we continue. We say, well, I don't have time for that, and I don't have time for that, and I don't have time for that. Does that sound about right? And, you know, for those of us who are still working, well, I've got this job I've got to do, and I've got to get this done, and 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 the next thing I know, it's the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the year, and I'm not taking that time to pray like I did before, and I'm not taking that time to read scripture like I did that before, because all of those things are a central part of the Christian faith, because if we don't know the story that's contained in scripture, how are we going to even begin to understand the resurrection? The truth is we can't. If we need to know the rest of the story. It doesn't make sense unless we understand that, that this Messiah had to come in, in the form of a human, but also God. Because if we read the entirety of Scripture, we hear the story, see the story told over and over again about how eventually God will send someone who is different than all these other prophets, who is going to do a great thing that will have the power to heal and to forgive. How many times when Jesus goes to heal somebody does he say, and I forgive you of your sins? Most of the time, by the way. Because what he comes to do isn't to heal the outward stuff that we think is the most important and must be healed or the inward things that hurt that we wish would stop. He's come to heal our very selves. And he offers that because he offered his life. He gave it up in place for our sin. Now, sin is that stuff that we all do. It's a turning inward and away from God. It's a, I'm choosing myself over and above anything else. It's a, I'm what matters, not the person next to me. But a complete and utter focus on my own needs, my own wants. Now, what I do know as a parent is oftentimes it's not quite that. It's more on the needs of my children and the wants of my children. Does that sound familiar? But we all do this. And as we do this, we turn away from God and we turn away from his teaching to love our neighbor as ourselves, to pray for those who persecute us, and to love God with all that we are. Now Jesus sums it up in two, word, in two, in two uh, laws in Matthew, in Matthew 22. He says, love the Lord your God with all that you are and then love your neighbor as yourself. That this is the calling that he has given to those of us who understand that God was at work in Jesus Christ. So that when they get to the tomb and they see that it's empty and his body isn't there, they begin to ask those questions, well, what does any of this mean? I mean, we watched God do all of these amazing things. Now, you and I haven't had the chance to watch God do that kind of amazing stuff, except that we have. We have our own stories and our own understanding of how God has relieved us, how God has healed us, how God has made us whole in those moments when we don't believe. On Thursday, I found myself reflecting on Judas. That's a weird thing to reflect on. And I found myself last night, as I was trying to put the final touches on what I was preparing, thinking again about Judas. Because Judas is a profound example of how much God loves us no matter what we've done in our lives. I know that sounds weird, but he is. 
because he sat at the table at the Last Supper with the rest of the disciples. And before that, Jesus washed his feet along with everyone else's. Now he gets up and leaves the table before Jesus gives his final command that the the new law is that of love. But Jesus says, as they sit at that table, I know one of you will betray me. I know this is what you're going to do. But he still washed Jesus' feet, Judas' feet. He still washed the feet of the one who would betray him. When you think about what it means to love, to love someone else, to love as God loves, what I want you to honestly think about is how much God loved God loves us because look at how much he loved Judas, even knowing that Judas was going to betray him. Here's the thing. We betray God in some way every day. And through the resurrection of Christ, we find new life in him because when he rises from the dead, he conquers that consequence for sin, which is death and separation from God. When the women find that tomb empty, when the disciples eventually begin to understand that that tomb is empty, they begin to understand that something new, something new has entered into this understanding of the faith. And that is that I no longer have to make an individual sacrifice. One has been made for me, that God loves me so much that regardless of what I have done in my life, he has offered himself as a sacrifice for my sin. And he didn't just stay dead. He rose again. And in his resurrection, he invites us in to a new life in him where hopefully our focus changes from the things that are about us to serving God and God's kingdom. But we've got plenty of examples in scripture and in our own lives of how we go backwards all the time. So we need this celebration every single year to remind us that our God is not dead, that our God is alive. And because our God is alive, he can live in us and help and heal and make us whole so that we can share that experience and that love of God with others. Praise God that that tomb was empty, that our Savior rose from the dead, That he can look at us in our darkest moments and say to each and every one of us, I love you. That we can seek forgiveness for our sin and know, and know that God offers us that forgiveness. Amen? The next hymn is number 322, Up from the Grave He Arose. And then after the hymn, please stay standing for the affirmation of faith. Please stand if able.
of faith is number 882 in our hymnal, but you can use any um, one of the apostle creeds that you would um, recall from your childhood. I believe in God the Father, uh, Almighty, sure. creator of heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. I believe, believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord, our Lord who was conceived, conceived by the, by the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, resurrection of, of the body, and, and the, the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. I'm going to invite us into a time of prayer with, with God and with each other. I Oh, you can be seated. You don't need to stand through that. I'm going to invite us into a time of prayer with God and with each other. If you feel moved, I encourage you to lift up whatever it is that the Lord has laid on your heart. If it's a concern, end with Lord in your mercy, and we'll respond, hear our prayer. If it's joy, Lord, for your blessings, hear our praise. So before we start prayer, I have one question. Kids, did you get enough candy? I don't agree. I think kids got enough candy. So I guess you're going to have to pray for more, but um, I'm going to say that it's up to your parents. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we gather in this time of prayer with you and with each other, we give thanks to you for your love, the love that you offer us through your sacrifice on the cross and through your resurrection as you invite us into new life in you. God, may we hear, may we hear you calling us to turn away from sin and toward you. May we dedicate ourselves again this day to the service of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we lift up those who are unable to be with us due to illness or injury. God, we pray for your hand of healing on each of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we think of those who are experiencing a time of mourning in this season of resurrection, and we pray for your comforting spirit to be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up those places in our world that are filled with violence. And we pray for your return to bring a lasting peace. We ask all of this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and pray as he taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite us now to join in the invitation and confession in part and for our communion service. 
and I'm going to nominate people to help <laughs> with communion. Uh, Paula? Yeah. Beth? Can you? Yeah, and Lord, that's enough. We got it. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, free for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As those who have been forgiven, as those who have been reconciled, let us take this time to offer back to God what he has blessed us with. Uh, you can give online through the church website in a few different ways, Tidely, PayPal, DonorBox. You can send in uh, a check. Uh, and for those in person, uh, the ushers will wait upon you for your offering. Please come forward, ushers. Everlasting Father, thank you that you are the light of the world, guiding our steps on your path. Your word says that the earth is yours and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to you. We recognize everything we have belongs to you. We acknowledge that our very lives belong to you. We now offer back to you a portion of what you have given us. May God the Father prepare our journey. Jesus the Son, guide our footsteps, and the Holy Spirit watch over us on every path that we follow. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Would those of you who are helping with communion please come up? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God in all power and might, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people declaring the wonderful deeds in Christ, who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be the wor- be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Come forward and receive what you are called to be, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood.
It's a good thing that the loaf rose right this time, isn't it? The last time, that, the last time I made the bread for communion, it didn't rise. Yes, I make the bread. It didn't rise all the way, and so it was kind of like a heavy, you know, because that's what happens when it doesn't rise. And I said a prayer as I was making the dough, and I usually do, and then I said another prayer, Lord, I hope it rises even more in the oven because I'm sure there will be people because usually there's a whole lot more left for my children to eat afterwards, so they're going to be disappointed. But you have come forward and received what you are called to be, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Let us join together in one final song. Him, him number 310. I know that he is living, whatever falls may say, I see. had that note in me once. I don't know, was it E, I think? It's a little, it's a little high, isn't it? Sorry. The Easter hymns are all kind of high, and I know better because I don't have, as you can tell, a very high voice, but yet I picked all the ones that made us go, Whoa! anybody else with me? <laughs> May you be filled and renewed in your faith and your commitment to Christ as you go into the world today, knowing that you are a disciple of Christ, a child of God who has been loved, freed, and forgiven. Go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
you feel comfortable to please join hands with those around you as we sing together our closing uh, response, Shalom to you. Shalom to 